Okay, time for another tutorial, and this is a finishing tutorial devoted to a new Sculpt Nouveau product. This is the Darkened Iron B. And Iron B, for those of you who have been following our channel for a while, you've probably already seen this in use on some of our previous tutorials where we use it to uh, create real rust. Iron B is basically an acrylic base that's full of iron powder. So that allows it to rust like real metal because it is real rust. So in order to do that, now the basic technique is we apply our metal coating to a surface and we do this in two layers. We apply one, one layer, let that dry as our base coat, and then a second layer while that's wet, that's when we patina that surface and that's what starts that uh, oxide forming, which is where we get our rust. Now the difference here with the Iron Bee, the darkened Iron Bee, and the regular Iron Bee, is this has a, a black pigment in it as well as the iron powder. So what that does is that gives us a, even if we were just to use it by itself, we get a much better, a much truer darkened iron look if we aren't doing anything to it. And there's some customers that prefer to do that for some decorative applications where they just apply the iron bee and don't apply any rust to it. But for our purposes to today, we're gonna apply this over a planter um, using an HVLP spray gun. Now I'm gonna leave it to the spray gun manufacturer of your choice to decide uh, which one you wanna use and how you wanna use that. But basically HVLP stands for high volume, low pressure. So we're using this at about the recommended pressure, about 40 PSI. And we're gonna spray that onto a planter and then we're gonna oxidize that. Now our oxidizers of choice for this are two different uh, patinas that you've probably seen us use in a lot of other videos. This is the light green patina and the Tiffany, uh, I'm sorry, the light green patina and the tan patina. And the reason I use these in tandem for this kind of thing with uh, the iron is the, the light green patina used by itself just forms a light rust, a basically a traditional reddish brown rust. Uh, but what the tan patina does, it, it's a little bit more aggressive acid and it also has a little bit of pigment in it. So this is what gives us that newer rust look, the oranges and the yellows and things like that. So this one I like to use fairly sparingly because it's easy to, to let this overtake the green if we're not careful. But just remember that when you see that light green, that's, uh, that's typically, you're gonna get a green if you put that over a copper alloy. Um, anytime you're applying this to iron, you're going to get a uh, rust. So we're going to have these ready to go. And remember that uh, the spray bottles, these uh, spray heads that come with these do have a steel spring and that will rust and wear out once it oxidizes. So when that happens, the patina is still good. If there's still patina left, transfer that to a, another cheap spray bottle and you're good to go. But just remember that that, uh, depending on how fast you use up this bottle, you may uh, uh, oxidize that spring and that spring may go out before you use up all of the patina solution. Now, important note with our Iron Bee. Now, I've already got some loaded in my spray gun here, but important to remember that because this has actual iron particles in it, that uh, over time when shipping, these will settle out and the iron will wind up at the bottom of the bucket. So make sure before you use this that you shake it up really good. And that suspends the pigment really well, but also gets that iron uh, those iron particles spread throughout that uh, suspension. So if you don't do that, you wind up with very little iron actually sprayed onto your piece. And then of course, you'll have some areas reacting really well and some not. Now, the other really important variable in this is temperature and humidity. Today, it's uh, kind of a rainy day outside. This is the second day of the new year of 2023. And I could tell just as I was walking into the shop this morning, this is like perfect temperature for creating rust. So we have high humidity and mild temperatures. So we're actually gonna be, even though it is January, we're probably gonna be about 75 degrees today. And of course, about 50% humidity. So really good, very conducive temperature and humidity for creating really good oxides. So be aware of that. If you're working in a place like uh, uh, you know, Phoenix, Arizona, and or uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, where it's really dry, really arid, it's gonna be hard to get a really rich oxide without the help of a humidifier. 
Um, now, if you're down in uh, Houston or New Orleans or down in Florida, where you have really high humidity, you're not gonna have any problem at all. But be aware of that, that environment is a critical factor in creating a good patina. Now, even though this is a water-based metal coating and is not giving off any kind of fumes or things like that, anytime we're spraying something, we obviously don't want to be breathing whatever that something is that we're turning in a, into an aerosol. So always a good idea to uh, use a respirator when you're working around any kind of sprayed materials. Uh, we have good ventilation in our shop, but still anything sprayed like this, especially anything that contains metal, always a good idea to wear a respirator. And this is just a, a scrap piece of sign board that I have just to test my spray pattern before we start on our planter. Okay, now our first coat is applied and we're ready to put on our second coat and time is of the essence when we spray on our second layer because when anytime we're using a spray application, our bead metal coating is gonna dry faster than it would if we're brush applying or roll, roller applying or whatever. Anytime we're putting on a thin layer like this, it's gonna dry out that much faster. So you wanna be prepared to apply your patinas while this is wet. So we're gonna apply our green first and then uh, put this on in just a few areas. Just, I'm gonna to try to be as uh, minimalist with this as possible, but we wanna have these ready to go. And also make sure our sprayer is ready and uh, also be obvious, should be obvious at this point, but uh, anytime you're using a sprayer like this, make sure that uh, you're ready to clean this out when you're not using it. Obviously for this, it's just water. We just run clean water through this to clean out our spray gun, but make sure that you're ready to clean everything up as soon as you're done with your spray application. This is a cheap spray gun, but I still wanna use it a few times. So anytime I'm using something like this, I wanna be prepared to clean that out with clean water. So that said, we're ready to move on to our next spray application. And again, we just wanna make sure we're spraying this on and while it's wet, that's when we apply our patina. So we gotta make sure all of our ducks are in a row so we're ready to do that. Now again, ready for our spray patina. Okay, we've applied our patinas and we've got our metal coating on, everything is drying, and now it's up to father time to finish this out. So we're gonna step back and let this react. And at this point, again, your environment is going to determine a lot of the color that you get. 
So best to just back off and let this happen. And once we come back to this, we have a couple of options. We can leave it as what's called a living patina, where we don't seal it and just let it react. And over time, it will change a little bit. Or we can seal this, if we like it exactly the way it is, seal this with a matte sealer and call it done. And for that, that's where I recommend the clear guard matte. But we're gonna go ahead and let, step back and just let this thing react. Okay, this is after about two hours of oxidizing. So you can see we have some nice uh, reds, yellows, and oranges developing. And I'm gonna let this go a little bit longer and then I'm gonna seal this with a matte sealer. Now I'm not gonna do that on videotape, but I am going to uh, link at the end of this video, check there's, I'll put a couple of videos at the end of this for some other resources on creating rust. So one of the, the, one of the things about spray application is we don't get near as aggressive of a rust happening that we do with a brush or roller application. So I'm gonna to link to a couple of other tutorials at the end with that. But uh, also, be sure to check out the, the link. I'm going to put a link to our video library in the video description because if you're new to all the uh, finishing techniques like this, we have a lot of finishing videos in our video library on our website. And uh, that's a great resource for starting out. A lot of this stuff, there's just so much to learn. And the more of a mental arsenal you can build up of these techniques, the better off you'll be. So be sure to check that uh, link in the video description. And of course, I'll link to all of the products we used for this. But again, at this point, we can either call it done because it is dry to the touch, uh, or we can seal it and then call it done, or we can let it sit a little bit longer. Uh, if this sits for, say, another couple of days, we're going to get a little bit more aggressive rust. And I'll post some about uh, that on Instagram once this develops a little bit more. Um, but thanks again for watching. Happy New Year to you all. And of course, so anyway, thanks again for watching. Happy New Year. And again, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you can be notified when we put out new content.